Hi, everybody. My name is Diana Chen. I run content marketing at Unstoppable Domains, and I've been with the company since the beginning of this year, 2021. I joined Unstoppable Domains because I really bought into the vision and the mission of what they're building here. I truly believe that they're helping to build out the internet of the future, and that to me is super exciting. I always have been interested in cutting edge technologies and sort of like building the future of the world that we're going to live in. So um, I just saw a lot of potential there. And then I met the team and the team was all really smart and really competent and really fun people. And so I thought that uh, that was a place where I could see myself fitting in. So I first got interested in this space when I met the founder, uh, Matthew Gold, at my last company. I was helping him build out the Unstoppable podcast, which I now run. Um, and as soon as I recorded a couple of episodes with him and learned about decentralization, the decentralized web, um, all of that stuff, I instantly got hooked. I actually have a background as a content creator. I was a travel blogger for a number of years and um, worked with brands on Instagram as well. And so I immediately understood the use case for content creators and um, how much better Web3 is going to be for content creators and how much more content creators will be able to earn what they deserve for the content they create instead of basically giving their content for free to all of these centralized platforms and then monetizing only on a tiny fraction of that. The areas of uh, crypto or blockchain that most interest me are probably NFTs and DAOs right now. I think with NFTs, there is so much potential for them and so many use cases that we can't even dream of yet. Right now, we've pretty much just seen NFT artwork as the main use case um, with some you know, other things like NBA Top Shots and things like that. But I think there are so many different use cases for NFTs uh, that we you know, haven't seen yet and that we probably won't even see for years to come. Um, and I think ultimately that any unique asset we own can be tokenized as a, an N NFT, a non-fungible token, including things like our passport, our driver's license, uh, our mortgage papers, our insurance papers, anything that is unique to us can be tokenized. And I think it's just going to make life a lot easier to basically have all of that on the blockchain and um, be able to carry it around in our wallet all in one place as our digital identity instead of, you know, having all of these, you know, fragmented pieces of paper lying around. Uh, and then with DAOs, um, decentralized autonomous organizations, I am really fascinated by DAOs right now as well, because I really think that DAOs are changing the way that organizations work. And I think in the long term that DAOs are going to replace a lot of traditional institutions and organizations that we see. Um, and I'm just really excited to see how that takes place and how that really evens out the playing fields for a lot of people and gets a lot of uh, people in the community involved instead of, you know, these traditional institution structures with really, uh, stringent hierarchies where you know you always have the people at the top making all the decisions and the people at the bottom who are basically just pawns in a game i think with DAOs we'll see a lot more even playing field in organizations and we'll see a lot more like how much you contribute is how much you how much say you get in the organization so which to me just seems like a much fairer structure when I first got into crypto, it was definitely overwhelming. There was a lot to learn. Um, I think for me, I just started, I started with looking at like Hacker Noon, The Defiant. Um, I got on Twitter and started following people who were prominent in the space and thought leaders in the space. I also would keep a notes document on my phone where I would jot down any words or concepts or any questions I had as I was reading these blogs or uh, listening to podcasts or scrolling Twitter. And then in my free time, I would go through my notes doc and Google all of the questions that I had. And that obviously led me down a lot of rabbit holes as well. But um, yeah, I don't know that there's like a great way to start learning other than just, you know, start Googling questions that you have, download some podcasts. That was a great way for me to learn. Um, and then just always, you know, keep a curious mind and always be a student. For me, my favorite resources for learning in the space right now, um, I, I really like Masari for just deep research. Uh, if you have a topic that you're really interested in, like NFTs, for instance, or DeFi, there are so many great resources on there. Their analysts are so well researched and their papers are so well researched and like they go really deep. So you'll learn a lot there. If you're trying to learn about DeFi, I really recommend the Defiant. They have um, articles on their website and then they also have a really great YouTube channel that has a lot of good information too if you like consuming content that way. 
And then I would say uh, crypto Twitter is where I hang out the most and where I probably do the most learning and get the most information. And um, there's so many great people to follow on there. There's, I think Cooper Turley from Audius does a great job with his tweets. I think, you know, Mason Nystrom from Masari, Brian Flynn from Mabbit Hole. I mean, there's a whole list I can go down, but those are a few to call out. Um, so I would encourage you to get on Twitter. Uh, Discord is a great place as well. Reddit, um, all of those places. And th those are great places to start learning. I think in the long run, blockchain domains will impact every aspect of consumers' lives. Um, anything from transacting money, so it makes you know paying people in crypto a lot easier. It's basically like the Vemo um, that we know, like this is how easy it is to pay people with crypto. And then I think also that it'll be key in helping people build their digital identities. So right now, our digital identity is mostly tied to our probably our social media. Uh, for people that don't have that, maybe your email, maybe a website that you have. But I think in the future, our blockchain domain is going to be linked to all of those uh, aspects of our lives. And so it's going to be linked to all of our social media. It's going to be linked to any interactions that we have with any applications on the web will be linked back to our blockchain domain. So I think it really will be pivotal in shaping our digital identity and how we choose to present ourselves out in, in the web, whether it's, you know, with our, uh, our real name or with a pseudonym or totally anonymously. I think the most surprising thing I learned um, is actually about how Web 2 works, like the, the web that we know today and how much about Web 2 I've taken for granted and sort of accepted as this is how things work, even when I wasn't totally satisfied with the way that things worked. And so I guess um, one example is, you know, in today's world, uh, I think if, if you wanted to wire money, for instance, to somebody in a different country, it would take, you know, at least a few days to get there if, if it's fast. And then if it's slow, it could take weeks or maybe even months. And this is something that I think I've just accepted as this is the way that things work. Um, and a lot of things like this, like I didn't really question, like, it, does it have to work this way? Like, is there a better solution? Uh, a lot of these questions I never asked myself before getting into um, crypto and blockchain and learning about DeFi and, and learning that, no, this isn't the way that things have to be. Yeah, so I, I would say that's the most surprising thing is like learning about how the world I have lived in my whole life works. Uh, and then in terms of rabbit holes, there are definitely like too many rabbit holes to count. Basically, at any topic in the space, I have gone down some sort of rabbit hole in and um, it can be like a broad topic like DeFi or it can be nitty gritty like about a specific company or a specific project that I've learned about uh, that I, I wanted to like dig deeper into. For people who are new to the space, um, there are three main things I would recommend for you to learn more. The first is the learning part. So download some podcasts that are relevant, write down concepts or words that you don't understand and Google them later. So um, super easy, like just open up notes doc on your phone and start jotting down words or concepts you don't understand as you listen to these podcasts, as you read blog posts, as you scroll Twitter. The second part of it is to really just experience it and get your hands dirty. Um, so I would say get a wallet, buy some crypto, send some crypto, use some uh, decentralized applications with your crypto. And so if you're into art, for instance, you can uh, mint an NFT if you're artistically inclined or if you're not and you're just a collector, you can buy an NFT. Um, if you're into finance, there are a lot of DeFi protocols that you can play around with. If you're into gaming, uh, Axie Infinity, I think is a big one these days. Um, I'm personally not into it, so that's just what I've heard. But also you can also just like go on CryptoKitties, for instance, and that's super easy. Go buy a cat, breed some cats, do some uh, fun things like that. Also, I encourage you to check out the metaverse as well. And so I love like just strolling around Decentraland or crypto voxels and getting kind of a an insider look into what the future is going to look like. And I think that also breaks down a lot of stereotypes too. Like um, before I got in the space, I tended to think that everybody in crypto was, you know, either like a finance bro or a gamer geek. And I have quickly realized that that is just not the case. It's gotten actually quite mainstream. And there are really people from all different backgrounds who are in the space now and helping to build out the future of the web, which is really exciting. 
And then the third thing is to get involved in the community. So whether that's getting on Twitter or Discord or Reddit, meeting some people, following some people, um, get to know like sort of the whole vibe and the ethos of Web3 and what people are trying to build out. I think that's really important as well.